I'm here at the wharf, and this is your guide to what you can see, do, and eat here when you visit Washington, D.C. This is the third video in my Washington, D.C. Neighborhood Guides for Visitors series. So if you dig this style of video, make sure to give it a thumbs up on YouTube so I know there's demand for more. And check out the other neighborhoods that I've already covered, which I will link to in a playlist in the description. The Wharf is an area of DC that people tend to have strong opinions about. Admittedly, it does have noticeably different vibes than other areas of the city. Specifically, it does not have the same old, historic feeling that a lot of other neighborhoods do. That said, Trip Hacks DC is primarily for visitors, and I think that the wharf is a great spot for visitors to make their home base. So, we're going to cover everything from where you can stay at the wharf, how to get here, what to see and do, and my favorite places to eat. Washington DC does not have official neighborhood boundaries, but the definition of the wharf, to me, is pretty clearly defined as the narrow sliver between Main Avenue on the east, I-395 on the north, the Washington Channel on the west, and M Street on the south. Phase one of the wharf opened in 2017, and phase two in 2022. Depending on exactly when you're watching this video, phase two might not be entirely built out yet, but it is getting more and more developed each month. Now, let's talk about getting here and getting around once you're here. Unfortunately, there is no metro station at the wharf, but there are two relatively nearby. The LaFont Plaza station is about a 10 minute walk from the northern end of the wharf. And the waterfront station is about a 10 minute walk from the southern end of the wharf. Generally speaking, the LaFont Plaza station is more convenient for most visitors since it is on five different metro lines, whereas the waterfront station is only on one, the green line. The biggest downside to the LaFont Plaza station is that it can be tricky to find your way into the station. But the good news for you is that I recorded a short video with detailed instructions to do exactly that. There is a free Southwest neighborhood shuttle that will take you from the wharf to the LaFont Plaza Metro station to the National Mall near the Hirshhorn Museum and back around to the wharf. And while a free shuttle bus is great and I'm never gonna complain about it, I've often seen it operate with only one vehicle. So you may have to wait, depending on how lucky or unlucky you get with the timing. When I go to the wharf, I almost always get there on Capital Bike Share. There are currently three Capital Bike Share stations right along Main Avenue at the wharf. You can take a cab or an Uber but be warned that traffic along Main Avenue can get pretty gnarly. And while I don't recommend that visitors to DC ever try to drive around in their own car, if you must, there are three large underground parking garages here. But they're not cheap and they do fill up. If you must drive, budget for the garage and do not try to park on a street nearby. And lastly, you can get to the wharf on the water taxi, but I'll talk about that a little bit later when we cover things to do. Now, let's talk about hotels and where to stay. There are four hotels immediately at the wharf. Hyatt House, Canopy by Hilton, the Intercontinental, and Pendry. And I would recommend any of these. So check out the rates, see which one is the most affordable to you, or which one is in the loyalty program that you prefer. Any other hotel in 2023 that has the word wharf in its name is not actually at the wharf, so be careful with that. I will leave direct links to these four hotels in the description so that you're booking the correct ones. Now, let's talk about what there is to do once you get to the wharf. I think for many people, the main reason that you come to this area is to listen to live music. The Anthem is what I would call the Big Theater at the Wharf. It can host up to 6,000 concertgoers, and where you can see performers like the Foo Fighters, or Billie Eilish, or Morrissey. Artists that can fill up and sell out a big venue, 
but maybe not big enough for an NFL stadium. The two smaller venues at the wharf are the Pearl Street Warehouse and Union Stage. You might not find huge acts at these stages, but you can still listen to some awesome music nonetheless. Over the summer, you'll also find free outdoor concerts here. Music ranging from jazz to go-go to pop cover bands. Of course, it wouldn't be the wharf if I didn't talk about getting out on the water. If you want to paddle yourself, you can rent kayaks from the Recreation Pier. Like I mentioned earlier, you can ride the water taxi to either Georgetown or Old Town Alexandria. The water taxi is a fun way to get yourself out on the water, but it is not the cheapest or the fastest way of getting to either of these places. But as long as you're aware of that, it can still be fun. The Wharf Jitney is a free, small boat that ferries people back and forth between the Wharf and East Potomac Park. It runs weekends only from March through early December. And there are many privately owned and operated river cruises, many of which will depart from the Wharf. Back on land, the Wharf has all kinds of special events in every season. I'm here recording this in July and DC just hosted the MLS All-Star Game. So there's been lots of fun events for soccer fans here this week. In the spring, the Wharf decks out for cherry blossom season and hosts a pretty big St. Patrick's Day celebration around the same time. In June, you'll find pride events happening here, as well as free outdoor movies, dance nights, and exercise classes. In the fall, the wharf hosts a big Oktoberfest. And in December is the holiday boat parade and the start of winter ice skating season. So whatever season you're in DC, there's a decent chance you'll find some kind of special event happening here. Now, let's talk about food and where to eat. There are a ton of restaurant options at the wharf, and I will link to the full restaurant directory down in the description. If you're into seafood, you have to get fresh steamed crab from one of the vendors at the fish market. Unfortunately, the fish market has lost some of its vendors and is not quite what it used to be, but you can still get excellent steamed crab here. One of my all-time favorite cheap eats is Falafel Inc. One of the few spots in DC where you can get a big filling meal for under $10. And it's also great if you're traveling with vegetarians because most of the menu is vegetarian. If you like sweets, District Donut is one of my favorite donuts in DC. And for lunch, Grazi Grazi has excellent Italian deli sandwiches and salads. If you like tacos, check out Surfside. It's one of the places I highlighted in my most recent fast casual video. If you're a burger person, Lucky Buns just opened a new location in phase two of the wharf. While it's a never ending debate about who has the best burger in town, I know a lot of people who would vote for Lucky Buns. Now, I am a big fan of oysters on the half shell and both Hank's Oyster Bar and Rappahannock Oyster Bar are excellent choices for your oysters. For coffee, my current go-to spot is Colada Shop, which is a Cuban cafe, which has excellent Cuban food in addition to coffee and cocktails. You might not think of a concert venue as a place to go for good food, but Union Stage has surprisingly good pizza if you're craving it. And I want to acknowledge that almost all the places I've mentioned so far are more of the fast casual type places because that's just where I tend to go. But the wharf has lots of highly regarded sit down type places too. I just don't have as much personal experience with them. So take a look at the full restaurant directory and then when you get to the wharf, just take a stroll around and see which places look good to you. And I have to acknowledge that yes, there are a few chain restaurants at the wharf including a couple from a very well-known British celebrity chef. I can't, in good faith, recommend any of these places, but if you're curious, they exist. And now I want to know from you. Have you been to the wharf before? Which of the places in this video did you check out? Leave a comment down there and let everyone know where you went and how you liked it. And then I highly recommend watching my Georgetown neighborhood guide next. 
So you can take the water taxi over there and explore that neighborhood. Just go ahead and click or tap right over here to watch that next. Enjoy your trip.